Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson, and you're listening to Grilling JR with the voice of professional wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Jim, how are you, man? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. I'm uh, getting ready to go have pizza with Nate. I'm, that's a joke. It's a bad joke, but it's a joke. Uh, bless his heart. God dang. Yeah, he was in the news this week eating pizza in Gainesville. So, uh, not too terribly far from your neck of the woods. No, no, it's not. As, as, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I you read all kinds of accounts and sure as hell, whoever took the, whoever took the, uh, video got lots of tape and it was somewhat incriminating. It wasn't, it wasn't nature's best side, shall we say. Uh, but in any event, we just hope he gets over that. And I guess, uh, maybe alcohol had a little bit to do with it. I don't know, but I'm always pulling for Nate. There's no doubt. About it. I can't forsake a 30 plus year friendship because, uh, he over was over served someplace. So, uh, it's, it's, a it's a tough, ta- it's tough handed to play quite frankly. So I just believe that his players fans should just support him, stay loyal and see what happens. So, but anyway, uh, I was going to ask you about something else I had on my mind, which is my mind is works in mysterious ways these days. Well, let me ask you this. You mentioned alcohol. How long has it been since you had a drink, Jim? Uh, at least three months. Wow. Congratulations, man. That's really impressive. Thanks. Well, thanks. It wasn't hard. I didn't have any withdrawals. I didn't have any, you know, any issues. Uh, yeah. None, none, zero. And so people say, well, I can't stop drinking. Yeah. Well, you don't want to then do you? Right. That's what you're trying to say. I could stop drinking if I wanted to, but guess what? I don't want to. And I, I had a little different attitude of that. And I, what helped me a lot was all my meds I've been taking and they're lessening because I'm not taking as many pills. Uh, I just, I, I just believe that, uh, we can make some subtle changes and I had taken, I was taking all that damn medicine and it doesn't mix well with alcohol. So I just eliminated it. I just eliminated it and moved on. So all good, buddy. All good. Uh, I felt bad about this week's news about Lawler. Oh yeah. My partner, uh, you know, I, I don't think that he and I have worked our last match together. Okay. I don't, I don't, I really don't believe that. I think, I think somewhere down the road, uh, we'll, if nothing else, it'll be at a, <clears throat> pardon me. If nothing else, it'll be at an appearance. You notice he doesn't wear his hall of fame ring, but he'll wear that frigging Superman ring until cows come home. I didn't know that he didn't wear the hall of fame ring. Never. I've never seen him wear it. Wow. That's just King. The Superman is a, takes a bigger priority than the WWE hall of fame. How cool is that? Yeah. How long was he, uh, at, he was there over 30 years, right? I, he was. Yeah. I mean, he did have that one, uh, brief little, uh, vacation, I guess we'll call it. Yeah. But I think he came over in, um, late 92 or at least early 93. So we're thinking 31, 32 years. Yeah. I mean, he, he, a tremendous run that maybe a lot of people once upon a time thought they'd never see. And boy, when they did, it lasted for decades. And yeah. <laughs> uh, I know that the King has had some, some health issues in more recent years. And as I understand it, he's been on the mend and making some more appearances and yeah, you know, hanging out a little bit here and there. I'm glad to hear that he's got life back on track. And as you and I know, he's going to be fine. He doesn't need the, the, the coin. Uh, he's, uh, he's set and now it's just a matter of what's he want to do. What fun does he want to have? Yeah. How, how, uh, how much do are you going to saddle your old horse up Jerry and, and, and ride it to work? <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, well, yeah, you're right. He's going to be fine. He's always lived within his means. I doubt if he's got any debt, even on, even on his real estate, he owns a huge, beautiful home in Memphis. I stayed there many times, so it's pretty good. So. Uh, we pulling for him, uh, in all, on all aspects. I just think that he and Jr. and the King and an appearance is marketable, uh, after all these years together, 
So we'll see how that works out. I'm not saying that he's going to join the, the staff at AEW whatsoever. I, I don't right. have any, I don't have any idea about that. Uh, and nor do I want to know. It's not my place to hire talent, but I certainly, uh, feel in my bones that there'll be opportunities for he and I to work together, whether it be on a TV show, uh, a one-off type thing, uh, or cer- certainly some appearances. I had a chance to do an appearance with him in Oklahoma city. They caught, they called me late, <clears throat> pardon me. And it, co- it uh, coincides with our pay-per-view in, uh, in Vegas. So double or nothing. I can't miss that to go make a, uh, a dollar or two on an appearance. So we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll get there, but, uh, we still have great chemistry. You just have, when you're that together, that long Conrad, it's like you and Silva. It's six Fried and Roy. Right. <laughs> I laugh at my own shit more often than anybody else does. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and speaking of appearances, yeah, I let's hear- talk about it. You're going to be on the road again. Yeah. I can't believe this is real, man. But, uh, look at next that weekend, Hartville, Ohio in the yeah. Akron area. You're going right. to be making an appearance right there. Tickets are on sale now. Primetime12.com is where you can book your ticket to CJR in person in Hartville, Ohio on May 18th. It's going to start at one o'clock in the afternoon and you can get your autographs. You can get autographs on figures. You can do a combo of an autograph and a photo op. You can even get an inscription done. You can get all this lined up to see the voice of wrestling in Hartville, Ohio on April 18th at 1 PM by going right now to primetime12.com. Yeah. And, uh, uh, good. That's a nice graphic bull. You did a good job there. I think all the information is actually correct. Uh, which is nice. Uh, Hartville is near Akron. So I'm flying from Jacksonville to, to, uh, uh, where am I flying? Jacksonville to Charlotte and then Charlotte to Akron. It's only about 18 minutes or 18 miles rather away. Uh, yeah, Akron not, and uh, Hartville. No big deal. I was, was going to fly into Cleveland. You know, Raphael Morphy is going to meet me there. He's oh, gonna, cool. Yeah. He's going to be my, uh, have my back. And, uh, not that the promoter is not going to have a staff. He does. He will. I got a good agent. Uh, Steve Summers, uh, does a good job and he's got all those things handled. We do have books coming. So, uh, I don't know how long the, the inventory will last at these appearances, but we're going to have enough books there to should have enough books there to take care of everybody's needs. And on those appearances, I got no problem personalizing them. We saw in that graphic, uh, I think it said four words or less, or I, I, I that was not my idea, but it's what the promoter wants. And that's what we'll do. You know, you're booked. So you're going to put somebody over, as they say, and go do it. So I'm looking forward to that May 18th, one o'clock, as you said, uh, near uh, Akron, uh, near Cleveland. And, uh, it's a big deal that I, I know that the promoter told me on my second leg of my flight, I'd be, uh, on the plane with, uh, uh, Tori Wilson, which really disturbs me. She's always just been a, no I'm kidding. <laughs> Boy, she's still hot. She's still so hot. No doubt about it. And somebody's going to hear this. Say, oh, he's wilding again. JR's wilding. Shit. She's such a sweetheart. She's married. That's <laughs> the last thing a 72 year old guy wants to do is get involved or try to get involved in somebody's marriage. Are you kidding me? God damn. So anyway, uh, there's that. And a hey, bull put that graphic up again. If you don't mind, please. Uh, that's the one for. The, the first one coming up May 18th. And then, uh, we have another graphic that has, uh, uh the other, other appearances that are currently booked. More of them are being planned. Uh, so I think that's kind of cool, but, uh, June the 18th, you see that one June 8th. I mean, that's a local for me. I think river city been- wrestling, St. Augustine, Florida tickets are on sale now yeah. at rivercitywrestling.com. CJR in person on Saturday, June the 8th. He's also going to be making his way to the former ECW arena in Philadelphia on July 6th for that'll battleground be, wrestling. That'll be fun. 
Tickets are on sale at battlegroundchampionshipwrestling.net. That's battlegroundchampionshipwrestling.net. In order to see JR at the old ECW arena. That's going to be cool, man. I'm looking forward to that. I've never done an appearance, I don't think, at least what, that I recall, uh, in the old uh, ECW arena. But uh, here we go. Another, another new adventure. Back in Hartville, Ohio on August 2nd. All the details are at primetime12.com. And we'll wrap the year up at WrestleCade. Thanksgiving weekend, rivalry college football weekend. It's Saturday, November 30th. It is an annual tradition, one of the biggest conventions, one of the most well-run conventions. Yeah. Just a great group of folks and an incredible collection of stars. I've done it before, and you don't want to miss WrestleCade. November 30th, Winston-Salem is where you're going to be, and you can get all the information on how to get hooked up with JR on Saturday, November 30th. Bring him a turkey leg and some cornbread dressing. Yeah. Wrestlecade.com. And if you're looking to get JR to promote your uh, event and appear at your event and sign some autographs and take some pictures and maybe throw a couple of lariats, no problem. It's <laughs> Jim Ross at 1168 media. That's where you can make an inquiry. That's Jim Ross at 1168 media.com. That's it. Simple as that. Yeah. Get after it. And, uh, I'd, I'd love to work with you and uh, I love these appearances for somebody that's been kind of confined to their place, like here in Jacksonville. Now, uh, it's really uh, going to be something I'm looking forward to. I get out of the house for a good reason. I get to go see a lot of wrestling fans and I'm still one of those guys that, uh, respect and appreciate and want to show gratitude to those that have supported me over the years. And when you're. 50th year in the business is, un is underway. Uh, it's hard to beat, man. It's hard to beat. It's hard to imagine the loyalty these fans have. And, you know, Conrad, I go to these places and I'll, I'll meet grandpa and son, and then I'll meet grandson. Wow. And it's pretty cool. Somebody said, well, that makes you feel older. No, I don't. It makes me feel gr grateful. Yes. So it's a simple deal. So anyway, uh, appearances on deck should be fun. Hope you guys will tune out tune yeah. in and, and join me on those. So, uh, now what are we talking about today? It's kind of an interesting topic. I thought we're going to be talking about your jump to AEW and how that whole transition happened, but we hope that you'll jump out to Las Vegas and see Jr. live. He's going to be calling the pay-per-view for double or nothing. And this to me is the big AEW show. And I know that people would argue that it's all in, but Respectfully, we've only had one of those technically for AEW, and that was at Wembley. But this is really what started it all. This is like the five year anniversary of AEW because their first big show was Double or Nothing 2019. JR was on the call for that. He's going to be on the call for this. You don't want to miss it. Las Vegas is always such a fun town and it has a big fight feel because of all the famous boxing matches and famous MMA moments that have existed there. It's sort of once upon a time, the the second home for AEW besides Chicago and Jacksonville. And they return on Sunday, May 26th. It's going to be everywhere you enjoy pay-per-view, but go see it live. AEW always delivers on pay-per-view and this won't be any different. We've got Swerve Strickland defending the AEW title against Christian Cage. We've got Tony Storm def uh, defending her AEW women's title against Serena Deeb. Willow Nightingale will be defending her TBS title against Mercedes Monet who's making her AEW in-ring debut and Roderick Strong will be defending the international title against Will Ospreay. Man, this is going to be a barn burner. There's going to be a lot of great matches, a lot of great wrestling on this show, Jim. Yeah, a lot of great wrestling. That's your, your, you hit the nail right on the head, Connie. Uh, everybody's competitive. The match, the, the matches that they are in, they want to steal the show. They want to leave a lasting memory of a, of a, of a wrestling match. Uh, well done. And, uh, so it'll, it should be cool. I just, I hope that, uh, fans will tickets are still available by the way, uh, uh for that event. And, uh, if, if you can, if you can afford it and are so uh, like mind as Conrad and I go, go in person. Conrad's right. Uh, for whatever reason, the, uh, the talent on AEW. Well, I don't know exactly how it happens, but they seemingly always outdo themselves on pay-per-view. Uh, 
uh, you get these matches that are highly rated and highly thought of. It's a pretty cool deal. So in any event, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm also looking forward to my youngest granddaughter's high school graduation. I'll be in Oklahoma for that. No appearances, just seeing, being a proud grandpa and, uh, those kids do well. My, both my granddaughters are, are going to be successful. Uh, they're afraid not to be. So, uh, no, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, but I, I love those girls and I'm going to, I'm going to be there supporting them. So all good, buddy. All good. But you, you were taught, we're talking about me transitioning to AEW. Let's get started on that because it's an interesting topic to say the very least. Well, there's no doubt about that. And before we get started, I do think that we need to remind everybody that, you know, the reality is life doesn't happen bi-weekly. So why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with earn in earn in is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work up to a hundred dollars per day or $750 per pay period. Just download the earn in app and verify your paycheck. Then access up to a hundred dollars a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. This is great. If you're looking for a special night out or a last minute gift for a loved one, maybe you had an unexpected trip to the vet. Well, earn in has your back, make earn in a part of your financial routine and join earn ins over three and a half million customers who say things like when I think about earn in, I think about financial stability, security, and it gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download earn in today. It's spelled E A R N I N in the Google play or Apple app store. When you download the earn in app, just type in grilling under podcast. When you sign up, that will really help the show. Remember that's grilling under podcast. Earn in is a financial technology company, not a bank subject to your available earnings, daily max pay period, max and location. See earn in.com slash T O S for details. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. So Jim, let's sort of start at the beginning. You know, um, the, the whole story of AEW really probably started, believe it or not, with a tweet from Dave Meltzer in May of 2017, where he's basically making a comment that an American professional wrestling promotion called ring of honor could not sell 10,000 tickets for a wrestling event because that was a feat that no U S based wrestling promotion besides the dominant WWE had done since WCW did way back in 1999. Now that felt like a safe bet because at that point you're talking about 18 years since anyone has done it. Of course, as we recall, Cody Rhodes, the young bucks and Kenny Omega promoted and created all in which launched in September of 2018. It did feature a lot of wrestlers from ring of honor, but really promotions from all over. And the event sold out in like under a half hour. It had the largest attendance for a professional wrestling show in the United States that was organized by promoters who weren't affiliated with the WWE or WCW since 1993. In total, there were 11,263 tickets sold. I guess that's total utilization is the term they would use. Were you surprised by this, that the guys could pull this together and really seemingly it all was born out of a almost off the cuff comment from Dave Meltzer? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was happy for them. Uh, happy for AEW that they sold a, a ring of honor, however way you want to uh, address that. But, uh, it was a pleasant surprise. I thought it would do well. I always thought that there was a room for an alternative brand to tour and, uh, sell tickets. It was all a matter of getting the right talents in place. And, uh, Tony Khan did a great job of signing some very marketable, uh, young wrestlers. And I, I, uh, was very happy about that. Conrad, didn't I see you at that event? Yeah, we were there. You actually sat in uh, one of my suites at that show. Oh, one of my suites. I have well, we, we did Starcast, so we had a bunch of events, you know. So there was this contingent was watching with the legend, and this was for the media, and that was for family of Cody and blah blah blah. So 
we had a little string there where we worked with the building and uh i don't remember were you in the sean waltman one or the dave Meltzer one i don't remember that yeah so you're talking about a suite yeah yeah there were a few in a row that were that touched there and i knew like dave was in one and waltman was in another and raven was in another and i just wasn't sure who all was in there with you and, and that must, must be must be easy to get a suite well, yeah. I mean, I, when I promoted the, um, Starcast event with them, we did ticket packages. So I had a direct line to the building. So we marked, you know, some of that as a, a VIP experience and you got to watch wrestling with Sean Waltman or what have you. But as I recall, you weren't there at the start of the show. I think your flight no. landed during the show and then you it, came right yeah. to the building. That's correct. Uh, that's yeah. correct. And I watched it with you. Yeah. Uh, and your and your suite, uh, cause you had food. Oh yeah. I made sure I had food and I knew what you drank. We had that too. I'm trying to be a good host over here. Yeah, you are, you are, yeah. you pay attention. Uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was good. I, I, but I'm happy that they did well. It launched us. Uh, it gave us all, uh, some peace of mind that, Hey, look, we, I think we may be onto something because these 11,000 tickets sold, uh, were, uh, just. It, it just gave everybody pause that, Hey, look, I think we can do this. So I was excited to be there for that. It was just, it's just fun to be in a full building, hear the crowd, ch crowd chants and all that uh, wonderful emotions. This, it was just great. So that was a fun deal, but I, it's funny what you remember. I remember drinking a lot of crown Royal. Hell yeah. That's Hell good. yeah. Hey, chat me up. Oh, it's been said a lot. Do you think in your opinion, all in was like the proof of concept for Tony Cohen? Just your opinion. I think so. Yeah. You sold all the tickets. Yeah. And it, it wasn't because of ring of honor. It wasn't because of anything else going on. I don't, I don't think maybe I'm overlooking something, but yeah, I think it, it I think it like Tony was like me. It let me exhale in a very positive way. I thought it was very good. And, uh, I'm happy that we had the success that we did at that point. Had you met Tony Khan? Had you heard the rumors and the rumblings that perhaps he was wanting to get more involved in professional wrestling? Yeah. You know, Connie, uh, I met Tony, uh, on one of those weekends that we had a, uh, all a new Japan show. And, uh, I think it was, where was that long beach, long beach. Yeah. Thank you. And that was kind of cool. The rock gave me that shirt right there. I should sell it. No I'm kidding. I think that that show, the, uh, fighting spirit unleashed happened September 30th, 2018. So it would have been about a month after all in. So do you think maybe you met him a month after all in, or, or did maybe you somehow meet him before I met him before I met him during, uh, that new Japan, uh, show, he stayed at the hotel that we were all staying in. And he was with Alex Marvez, who I'd known years before. So Alex Marvez introduced me to Tony. Uh, we shot the breeze about wrestling, of course, and, and had a, a good visit, had a cocktail or two. Tony drinks those, uh, what do you call those? Those little seltzer things. He, uh, he drinks uh Trulies and white claws, white claw. Yeah. That's what I was trying to think. Of. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, it was. It, he, he was there to see that new Japan show. So that would have been March 25th, 2018. And then you're sitting in the uh, suite in September, Labor Day, and you see this sold out crowd that Cody and the Bucks and Kenny Omega all sort of put together. Right. And I'm, I'm curious, did you think, cause I mean, listen, this is a, a story that everyone in wrestling has heard before. Oh, there's this new billionaire who wants to start a company. Yeah. I mean, we even heard that with global back in the day, there's this mysterious benefactor and blah, blah, blah. It never pans out, but this one <laughs> was going to had, had Barry already spoken with Tony. Had you had some preliminary conversations with Tony or talk no, to I, me I, I, the only conversation I had with Tony Conrad were, uh, uh, that night at the bar, uh, that's where I met him with Alex. I'm glad Alex introduced us. Uh, I saw right away that, uh, Tony Khan had a great, uh, memory. He, he was a lot, he was a lifelong fan and just his dialogue and his, 
and the topics of conversation prove that to me without a shadow of a doubt. So I'm thinking, well, if this kid, uh, who has all this amazing passion and product knowledge, uh, is, uh, if he's like this all the time, I could, I could work with this, this deal. Right. So it was, a, it was a good, uh, it was a good meeting. I'll always be grateful to Alex Marvez for facilitating that, uh, happy hour, shall we say. And it was fun. They, they set, I don't know. There's, there's probably video out there somewhere. They set, uh, on the front row, Alex. And, uh, I don't know who got their tickets for them. I have no idea. I try to stay out of the ticket business as best I can, but sometimes they just drag you right back in buddies that I hadn't talked to since WCW wants tickets for things. So it's, uh, sometimes a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, you, cause you got that responsibility. Now, if you commit, you're going to get tickets for somebody and they've made plans to be there. Their tickets got to be there too. Right. So, so sometimes for me, that's a, another worry I don't need to deal with, but I, I had a, it was a good weekend to say the least. I had, I had fun doing the, the show. I think that was my first, it might've been my first, uh, new Japan show. I think I worked that show with Josh Barnett, who I always enjoyed working with. He's a good dude. He always had my back. I mean, literally and, fi and figuratively, uh, and he still does. We're great friends. And if I needed something that fit in his purview, I'd have no issues talking to him and, and him coming through just a great friend. And uh, he's a student of the game to say the least. And he saved my ass that uh, time with, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Jay white and juice Robinson. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that just a freak accident. Uh, but it worked out. What was the reaction internally within WWE to these rumors that Tony Khan might be starting a wrestling business? So there might be a new competitor. Do you know? No, I really don't. I don't know that they wanted to acknowledge it. Sometimes when you acknowledge something, it's real. And I, they, they, they added credibility and credence to the fact that there's going to be a new game in town. And the guy that's going to orchestrate this has the funding and the finances to get it off the ground and make it work. So it was, it was a pretty cool thing. When, uh, when you had that initial conversation with Tony Khan mm -hmm. in long beach, had, had he expressed to you his previous attempts to, to work with WWE and, no. and how sort of the idea for AEW came about? Not really. Not really. He, we, we talked about the past a lot, historic things. Uh, you know, uh, he would tell me matches even in mid South that he got tapes of that, uh, helped drive the conversation. So a lot of just historic stuff. Do you remember this? Do you, what, what happened when the junkyard dog did that? How was bill Watts to work with, uh, things of that nature. So it was, a it was a great experience. But I found out right away. He's he, Tony Khan was real. He had, he had, he had answers. He had, he had education. It was just, it was great. So I'm thinking, well, I don't know where this is going to go, but I can see myself work with this dude. We, uh, we got to talk about what happened on November 5th, 2018. That's when all the trademarks are filed in Jacksonville, Florida. That's indicating the launch of all elite wrestling. Those trademarks included all elite wrestling, AEW, all out, all out, AEW, double or nothing, Tuesday night dynamite, AEW, double or nothing, several logos. This is all happening while you're under contract with WWE. Did you feel like Tony's timing was right? It was time for another competitor. Yeah, I did. I, I thought it was good timing. I had a good feel about it. And I think, uh, those 11,000 tickets sold, uh, would be all the proof I needed, uh, that there's a market out there for it. Uh, you, and, and he was really good about, uh, forecasting and planning and things of that nature. My only concern was talent. Uh, what kind of talents is he going to be able to solicit and sign to help this launch? And he came through big time because a lot of the talents that he, uh, uh, that, that, that he was working with were guys that were going to draw money. 
So, uh, Bucks, Kenny Omega. By the way, I talked, I had a long talk the other day with Kenny Omega. We've got a great relationship, good friendship. He's a good guy. Uh, but he's got the diverticulitis issues going ongoing. And, you know, I had 11 inches of my colon removed, uh, from diverticulitis, big surgery, uh, and to get me healthy. But it's, uh, I said, man, just listen to the doctors. Don't let anybody rush you back. Take your time and make sure you're healthy because this is not something you screw around with. This is not an ACL injury. This is not a labrum. This is your intestines and you got to be smart and listen to the doctors and don't let anybody on any side of your issue, talk you into coming back early. It's just send a good money after bad. In December of 2018, Cody, the young bucks, hangman, Adam page, they're all leaving ring of honor. And the official announcement of AEW's creation happens on being the elite. It launches at midnight on New Year's Day 2019. Of course, this web series was created by the Young Bucks. It really did tell the story and help sell the tickets for All In in Chicago. And that's where we announce AEW. And it's also announced in the episode, the show Double or Nothing. That's going to be the sequel to All In. I like the gambling theme. We know Las Vegas is going to ultimately be the destination, the former home of Halloween havoc for WCW. I mean, this is probably not a total shock to you because I know there's some connective tissue with Tony Khan and some others, but how exciting was this in hindsight, man, to see the launch of a new company. I I think we kind of take for granted that that was really just five years ago. Yeah. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Yeah, Uh, it is for me for sure. Uh, I think, uh, those 11,000 tickets sold answered so many questions as it relates to if you're a promoter, is there a, can we, is there a market share that we can tap into that will make, help make us profitable and help pay the bills. And I thought, uh, I thought that, that that's those 11,000 tickets sold. I've gone, I referred back to that on more than one occasion here. Don't mean to be redundant, but it just proved a lot of things. Yeah. It just, you know, it's like, okay, by God, this might work. And then, uh, seeing the talents coming in, you know, Cody and bucks. And of course the great Kenny Omega, uh, gave us pause for great matches and they were great. They had great matches. They still have great matches. So, uh, and Tony's done a good, Tony Khan's done a great job of, uh, soliciting other talents. And, and we've done a good job, I think, of, of home growing some of the talents, the Darby Allens, the Jack Perry's, you know, I got a ton of heat. You remember when I got a ton of heat on, when I stopped calling Jack Perry a uh, jungle boy. Yeah. He started calling him jungle Jack Perry. Yeah. Well, yeah. he can't be jungle boy while he's 30. Yeah. You know, you're not the zebra kid who was 50. Uh, George Bolas was his name. How do I think of that shit is beyond me. But anyway, uh, I had a, I had a good feeling about things and I wanted to be a part of it. So Barry Bloom, my agent, who's the agent. He's a, he's also now the agent of the young bucks, Kenny, uh, and others I'm forgetting, uh, but I don't get involved in their business. And so they don't get involved in mine and I got a good agent. Barry Bloom's been down the road with a lot of talents and, uh, you know, I've, I've, as a exec, former executive at WWE, I had worked with Barry on a lot of contracts. So he and I already had a good rapport and then just evolved into this AEW deal. And I think we're on our, it seems like we might be on our second or third contract. This, the, the latest one I signed was this past spring and, uh, it was for a year and, you know, realistically. Well, couldn't you got more time? I, I could have probably gotten more time, but I also wanted to be fair to Tony. You got a 72 year old announcer that all of a sudden for the first time in his life has these health issues. And I, you know, I didn't miss work, uh, working for Watts or Georgia championship or, uh, NWA or any of that stuff. So I, I, uh, 
I was at the right place at the right time. And I have absolutely zero regrets, uh, whatsoever. You signed that contract on April 3rd, 2019. It's a three-year contract with AEW. And we know that, you know, you're going to be finishing up a new contract that you had signed after Jan had passed with WWE. I assume that that was always the, uh, the holdup, if you will, that maybe is the reason you weren't announced in January. You were still under contract. When did those conversations uh, between your team, Barry Bloom and, and Tony Khan's team start. What was that process like to bring you in? Well, it's, uh, I just left in Barry's hands because being under contract, uh, to WWE, the last thing I wanted to do was to get sideways to their attorneys and run my tab up and all that stuff. So I just backed away from it all. I didn't, uh, I didn't dig too deeply into that situation. It just didn't make any sense. It didn't make common sense. So, uh, yeah, but that's kind of how I handled it. I, that's why you have an agent, let them run the interference, let him cut the deal. And, uh, we, and Tony Khan uh, took very good care of me on that, that, that scenario, the three-year deal was for the most money that I'd ever signed a contract for, including, including, uh, any of my deals with Vince. Now I made a lot of money for WWE. I, I did. I, you know, I got put in the video games. Uh, I, I, that earned me more royalty money. So I did really well with Vince and had nothing I had no ill feelings. It's just that I knew that from my past record, there, being replaced and reinstated and been replaced, uh, you know, all that shit that, uh, I needed to figure out plan B and I thought this was a very viable plan B. And then when the numbers came in, uh, from Barry after his talk, after his uh, no negotiations with Tony Khan, uh, I felt very comfortable that we were making the right decision. Let's talk a little bit about when you make the decision. I mean, you've got an offer, you know, that you're going to direct that to Barry bloom. So the con team speaks to the bloom team and they come to some sort of resolution. They get it to a point where, you know, Barry thinks you'll be happy. You are happy. You decide you want to move forward. Right. I don't know that this happened, but me thinking, I know Jr. you probably pick up the phone and call the old man and say, Hey Vince, uh, here's what we're doing. And just wanted to call and let you know, and talk me through that. If, and when that did happen, oh, that never happened. Okay. I never had any conversations with Vince whatsoever because why would I have conversations with him, Connie? Because it was obvious that he wanted me to have another announcer out there. One that wasn't old, one that wasn't Southern, one that wasn't chubby. I'm not as chubby today as I was then. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't bother him with it. That's Barry's job. Uh, and Barry had a good rapport with Vince still does cause he represents Paul Heyman and, uh, others. So he's, he's, he was in communication with, with Vince on a quasi regular basis because of the talents that he'd already represented or was representing. So, uh, but I never I never talked to Vince about it. I just thought it would be smoother just to get the hell out. And, uh, you know, I, I, once that gig was with AEW was established and the numbers were at least they're, they're confidential, but they were real numbers and Barry did a phenomenal job and Tony Khan's generosity made it very easy for me to make that decision. Did you ever have a conversation with Vince since you, when you left or, or, or made this the switch over, was there ever any sort of, uh, Hey, been nice working with you. Any sort of final words at all, or just move no, on? None moving on, well, moving on down the road, baby. Look, I, I spent, I, I got to work for, I started working for Vince in 93. Right. And so we're talking several years and, uh, I knew how Vince worked better than most, maybe better than anybody because of the the, uh, talent relations gig and the fact that, you know, we were, we, we rebuilt the talent roster for WWE, my team of, uh, in talent relations built a hell of a roster that fed that attitude era. And the, it was just, uh, it seemed like a no brainer, Connie. It seemed like a no brainer for me. Vince wanted to make a change. He had already proven that he'd done it several times. And I had an offer to do something where I was going to make more money. And I was even making for WWE 
So to me, it was just a layup. It yeah, was, no brainer. No, uh, no, no, none at all. Let's talk a little bit about that first contract. I know that this sounds silly now, but really Tony Khan in the wrestling business was, was, a uh, an unknown entity in this era. So I heard conversation from, from a lot of folks in this time where they would say, Hey, I needed a guaranteed no cut contract because I don't want to leave my WWE gig, which I know might not be exactly what I want to do, but I know that's always going to be there. I don't really know about this new startup thing. Did you get one of those no cut type contracts as best you can recall? Oh yeah. I'm, I was good. It was, uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm not going to lie to you, but I don't think I'm lying or making a mistake. I think that, uh, my contract with AEW, that first, the, the biggest one I got was, uh, one whereby my contract was guaranteed by the Khan family trust. Okay. And considering that Mr. Khan was worth 8.2 billion, I felt like I was covered. <laughs> it worked out real well. What did, uh, when you're having conversations with Tony, was he laying out the vision to you? I mean, one of the first trademarks we saw, and I even rattled it off a minute ago was Tuesday night dynamite. I know that he had, he had met with uh, Kevin at, at that costume party years prior, or maybe the year prior. And that's Kevin, what, what, what Kevin, the folks who were helping run Turner. And, and, and I'm wondering like when he's telling you, Hey, uh, Jr. we want you to come over. I want to just add context to this. He'd not yet announced the television show. Right. So respectfully, if you don't have TV, what do you need Jr. for? I'm sure right. it was at least a question people were asking. We know he was working behind the scenes. Did he lay all that out to you? I think I can get us a Turner show. I think yeah. it's going to be Tuesday night. You kind of thought all that was coming through. I thought so. Yeah. <clears throat> and he knew that I had, uh, a history with the Turner people. And so, uh, and I knew that if they were serious, it was damn serious. So, uh, uh, that was for dynamite. And then I think we added rampage or something just to give ourselves another show to, to talk about. But, uh, no, I, I, I felt very confident that TV is essential. There's two key points in a pro wrestling lexicon. And that you need to run a successful bit, excuse me, hiccups to run a successful business. And that is Conrad talent and television. You can't do one without the other. They're both equally important. If you don't have a good talent roster, you're probably not going to be successful. And I thought Tony had done a great job, uh, of, uh, you know, gathering talent. The Bucks at that time were hot a tag team as there was in the world. It seemed like Kenny Omega was the best bout machine. You know, it's just, uh, Cody Rhodes was a star. Uh, we didn't know he, we, he wasn't a star to the level he is now, but coming into AEW, uh, we knew that he was a special talent. And because I've been around Cody since he was a little boy through my relationship with his dad, uh, I felt good about that. So I wasn't amongst strangers, even though I, uh, hadn't met the young bucks in person at that point, I don't believe. Uh, so it was, uh, again, it, it comes down to just looking at the money term. You know, I, I looked at it just like I would, if I was cutting myself a deal in talent relations, I wanted to make sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and everything is going to be copacetic. I wasn't worried about my money. Obviously Mr. Khan, <clears throat> as I mentioned at that time was had a net worth of about 8.2 bill. That's a lot of money, man. It sure as hell covered my deal easily enough. So, uh, it was good. It was good. I, I had just, it, it was, it clicked. I, I credit Barry Bloom for that and his ability to communicate with the cons and their lawyers. And, uh, he's still doing it today for me. We, uh, we should talk about some of the talent who we know are coming. I mean, we, we know that hangman Adam page and Kenny Omega and, and the young bucks, they're already signed up, uh, right away as well as Cody Rhodes. But the other name that was being floated around a lot in this era, and maybe it's because 
Kenny Omega and yourself were both represented by Barry Bloom, but do you remember conversations about Bill Goldberg before AEW got up and running that, Hey, there's a rumor that maybe they're going to try to be working with Bill. Maybe casually Conrad, but nothing official above the line, the lead story. You know, if it leads, if it, if it bleeds, it leads type thing. Uh, not much bills reputation, uh, of, I don't want to say indecisiveness, but sometimes, you know, Bill had certain wants and he was represented by Barry as well. So, uh, I just never asked those questions. I just, I didn't feel like I needed to know. I didn't feel how, how me knowing that information was going to help anybody. If, if Goldberg and I were best buddies and I could influence him, then I would have, but that was not the case. So I don't think Goldberg was on the radar very prominently at that point in time. We, uh, we got to mention that Cody and the team came to your house to shoot a video, to announce your signing. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's revealed as, as Cody referred to you, I believe Jim F and Ross (laughs) really fun moment. The big reveal. What'd you think of the video and the presentation announcing that you were now all elite? Well, Conrad, the fact that those guys flew from Atlanta with a camera crew and Cody to my home in Norman, Oklahoma, uh, was very, I was very impressed with that. Uh, they said they were going to do something along those lines they kept their word. They did it. Uh, and I didn't demand it. That's what they wanted to do. They, they looked at me as a significant signing for their young company. And so I looked at that in a very positive way. So I, I had a, it was good, man. It was just really good. I, I, the best negotiation I've ever been a part of communication wise, you know, uh, I don't know that Tony Khan and I had any conversations to speak of about my deal. I I let Barry do all that and it it made it more professional. Uh, it just made it better all the way around. So, uh, I was lucky. I had good representation. And I was even luckier that my representation and AEW's representation were communicating well. Let's talk about the end of the, uh, WWE deal. I mean, towards the end, you're even making appearances while you're still, uh, not signed with AEW. I guess your WWE deal has just recently expired and you're telling inside the ropes, Hey, I'm hoping to sign with AEW on this day. So the announcement isn't exactly a secret, right? I think what we haven't touched on is what happened towards the end of your WWE tenure. As I understand it, when they signed you to that contract, maybe one of the reasons they signed you, they being WWE pronoun boy is they wanted to keep you off of the world of sport for ITV across the pond. And you took that WWE deal. It was your home, but maybe they did stop any sort of potential growth from world of sport. But at the same time, they allow you to finish up with access. So you technically have a WWE and an access deal, but you're looking for permission to re up with the access deal, which allows you to call new Japan and WWE doesn't want you to do that. Not only do they not want you to do that. They don't want you to work on the UFC fight pass show either. So it's almost like. You're almost being paid to sit at home. They're icing you out. Is that the way you felt? Yeah, I hate that. Uh, you know, how long, how much time do we have left here? Uh, I had, I had a great offer. Uh, the fact that m- me getting additional exposure, whether it be world of sport, world of sport was a big deal, man. I mean, that was uh, on the most powerful outlet in the entire country. Uh, so I had a great experience with the guys at uh, ITV and, uh, world of sport world of sport was like, uh, the wide world of sports to them, because in the heyday, the world of sport was big money, big audience. And so I, and I had a blast doing that. I, I produced that show. Uh, I, I remember vividly meeting with the talents, having production meetings the day, the day or two before, uh, answering questions. Uh, we don't want to see this. We don't want to see that. Uh, we want to keep this a family friendly show. So nobody go out there and grab their nuts, things like that. And, uh, 
So it, I, I had, I looked at that as a, as a historian type person, me being a part of world of sport was a real cool thing for me personally. Uh, and, uh, I wish we'd have been able to do more of them, but that just wasn't as the cards at that time. But I met, I met great friends and influential people that I still communicate with from time to time. Just, just awesome. So I, I, it was good. You can tell him it's weight I've lost Conrad. You see that picture? Yeah, do it what again. A, what a fat yeah. fucker. Different human being now, man. I am. I am. Di- I'm ripped. <laughs> I love no, you for that. No, I'm not. I'm just still a fat guy wearing smaller black shirts. But you are smelling better. Thanks to our friends at Mando. Woo. What's the most ma- What's the most valuable thing in the world? Is it a number one draft pick? Is it the home field advantage through the playoffs? No. The most valuable thing is time. Managing and worrying about body odor used to take up time. If you're paranoid about smelling, especially around midday, man, it can be all consuming, but not anymore. You need to switch to Mando whole body deodorant. It's going to free up a bunch of time. And I got to tell you, this has been a real game changer in my life because my wife put me on it. You know, she had been using one of their sister products for the ladies and it really, really worked. She was a huge fan of it. So when she saw that, Hey, this is for men too, buddy, it's a big deal for us. And here's why Mando is clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. I'm not saying you need to skip shower day, but if you have to Mando is your go-to. You see, Mando doesn't cover up body odor after the fact with heavy fragrances, like all the other deodorants. Instead, Mando stops odor at the source by blocking the bacteria on your skin from eating your sweat. And that's the actual cause of BO. Give yourself the precious gift of time and get yourself some Mando whole body deodorant. New customers can get $5 off of the best selling starter pack with the code JR at shopmando.com. And man, here's, what's cool about this. It's not just for your armpits. And you know, since I was a little kid, that's the only place I ever really used deodorant, but with this, I can use it everywhere, including on my grundle and balls, your belly buttons, your butt crack, your stinky crevices, stomach folds, even your smelly ass feet. Mando can help. It was created by a doctor who saw firsthand how BO was being misdiagnosed and mistreated. You see, it's powerful enough for the toughest body odor, but gentle enough to use everywhere, including your balls. Ooh. It's aluminum free. It's baking soda free. It's cruelty free. It's dye free. It's vegan free. And they're going to make you stink free because it is clinically <laughs> proven to control odor better than just a, sh- a shower and soap alone. Check this out. 12 hours after a shower, the average man's grundle odor is a five out of 10, but with Mando, It's a zero out of 10. If you are going to be camping, you're going to be vacationing. You're going to be traveling. You're going to be working outside. You're going to go play basketball. And I'm telling you, you're going to spend a day on the boat, spend a day at the beach. Mando is who you need to reach for. The Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, and two free products of your choice, like a mini body wash or deodorant wipes. And you get it all with free shipping. Now we've got a discount code to help you get hooked up on your favorite smelling whole body deodorant on the market. New customers get $5 off a starter pack with our exclusive code that equates to 40% off your starter pack. Just use our code JR at shopmando.com. That's S H O P M A N D O.com. And the code is JR. Man, uh, there ain't nothing better than smelling good, is there, Jim? No, absolutely not. You know, I got a package from from Mando before they became an advertiser. Yes, and I didn't know have I didn't have a clue what who sent it to me, uh, but I used it, and I still use it. It works like a champion, and I, I you just don't have any waste. It's a it's it's a been, it's been perfected scientifically. So, uh, I'm a big believer in, uh, Mando deodorant and, and, uh, all that stuff. It's just great. It, and it's, it's, it's a hell of an offer right now too. five dollars off your starter pack. And, uh, the starter pack will last you a while. So I'm a big believer. I use it. It works. I encourage you. If you're of the mindset 
to give it a try. It don't, you don't make any money stinking. No. Well said. Go use our promo code right now. Jr. at shopmando.com. So Jim, let's talk about when you're first doing this AEW venture. I mean, I think a lot of people probably assumed, well, given his history, he's going to run talent relations. And we know that is not the case. Uh, you're going to wind up being, I don't mean this the way it sounds, but quote unquote, just talent. You're not I had no pro- I, excuse me. I had no problem with that. I never signed up to be in charge of talent relations. And I did get that question all, a lot and I still get it occasionally, but that was not my goal. My goal was to go back to my roots, uh, you know, and, and, and be, uh, a, a broadcaster. That's what I, that's what brought me to the dance. And that's the music I wanted to hear again. So, uh, I had no issues with my assignment, none, none whatsoever and work with new guys. You know, I'd never work with a masked broadcaster like Excalibur, who by the way, is outstanding. He has a great product knowledge. Uh, he's taught me a lot about, uh, there's Alex Marvez. Look at Alex's button on his coat. God damn Alex. Stop it. Uh, but Excalibur is just really good. He's really, really good. And I, uh, he's helped me a lot. He's helped me a lot with, uh, uh, you know, with recognizing, uh, Lucha Libre things, uh, all Japan or new Japan things, all Japan, Japanese in general. So, uh, he's been a great friend and a great, uh, uh, asset for me. And we got new sweatshirts. It tickled me because I know how once upon a time you felt about the cowboy hat. And then eventually it became a signature and a trademark. Yeah. And when the world was first meeting Excalibur, I saw comment after comment with people saying, how ridiculous does he look out there in a mask? And I'm like, he's sitting next to a guy in a cowboy hat. Yeah. Yeah. And we've just gotten used to it. Like it's a little over the top by design. I think it's pro wrestling, right? That's right. Exactly. I had no issue with it. Uh, look, it's, he's just a good guy, man. Uh, yes, a good guy and smart. He's fair. He's willing to share his knowledge. That's the one thing about being a, a broadcaster is that you gotta be willing to share and you gotta be a good listener. And, uh, so everybody, all the dots can be connected when need be, which is most of the time. So, uh, Excalibur was a, a, a great gift. That was a good hire by Tony Khan and, uh, uh, Mark is Mark Letzman is doing a great job. He'll be around for a long time, long after I'm gone. We, uh, we should talk about the, uh, the decision to not be involved in talent relations. You said, Hey, I wasn't interested in that. You know, I wanted to go back to my roots. I wanted to focus on being a broadcaster. Had you just had your fill of that in WWE, just all the management and politics and whatnot. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I just. It just wasn't something I was, uh, compelled to gravitate toward again. Uh, you know, the, the time I spent in talent relations and WWE were some of the most successful and productive times that, uh, anybody in my role could ever have. When I got to AEW, I was always willing. I, I think I, my title was senior advisor or something, but I, I never, I never not, uh, gave Tony Khan an idea. If I had one or I have an opinion on a talent that he's bringing in or had brought in. So, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of little things that Jack Perry thing was, was, an, was an example. Uh, I, I thought that at some point in time for him to grow and become the star that he is today, he needed to be Jack Perry. Good name and uh, really good name. And I like that kid. I'm sorry that he had so many that it had issues, uh, there were some his doing and some that weren't right, but I'm a big fan of his work and I, and he's, he's made himself into a really good pro wrestling heel. On May 15th, 2019, AEW and Warner media would announce a deal for a weekly primetime show airing on TNT, um, which of course is the same channel that used to broadcast WCW Monday nitro. You see the picture there too. And I got to tell you, like when I first saw this announcement in front of the step and repeat and the upfronts here, and 
we got the young bucks and Kenny Omega and Cody and Brandy and Dr. Britt Baker. And, uh, we got Matt Jackson and we got, uh, hangman, Adam page, Dana Massey, Matt's wife, no JR. I thought it was interesting that you weren't at the upfronts and you weren't in the press release, but they rattle off all these other names. I mean, it feels like to me that maybe was a missed opportunity. I mean, you're well-branded to yeah. the wrestling fans. They they're familiar with you as the voice of wrestling and WWE hall of famer. And so many grew up on your, your call. It just felt odd to me that you weren't a part of those. Was that me weird? Too. Or did you just say, uh, Hey guys, do it will help me. I don't want to go. No, I didn't say that at all. I wasn't invited to be there. Uh, I wasn't booked as they say in wrestling. I wasn't booked. Uh, but if I had been booked, I would have been there. I do believe it would have helped us a little bit because of my name identity. Mm -hmm. And my, my exposure over the years, I mean, I had more television time than anybody that will showed in that picture, right? Uh, quality television time. I don't know how many at that point in time, I think I'd broadcast like somebody told me this the other day and I didn't, I've never kept track of it, but like 17 WrestleManias. Wow. That goes with everything else I've, I've done. Summer slams, Royal rumbles, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I was a little surprised, but I was, my feelings weren't hurt. It's just, it's just one less trip I had to make, but I would have certainly been there if, if asked. And I think I should have been there quite frankly, in hindsight. It's, uh, it's interesting to take a look back at this history because it wasn't that long ago, but on some level, it feels like forever ago. What did you think about you calling wrestling on a Turner station for the first time in forever? I mean, the last time was 2000. Uh, one in that, that simulcast, but realistically the last time was 1993. And now here you are all these years later. I, yeah. I don't know that I would have had that on my, my bingo card. Probably not. I didn't have it on mine either, but, uh, I'm glad that I got to put it there. Uh, but yeah, it was just a lot of transition, Conrad, a lot of transition, a lot of change. And as a former, uh, executive and working re directly under Vince McMahon, I just wanted to not be a pain in the ass to Tony Khan as far as management. I tried to make sure that that never happened. And then, you know, he, he got Tony Schiavone on board. As you see that picture there, uh, we're wearing the same jacket <laughs> and, and, and working with Tony was a bonus for me. That is more motivation to bring your a game. Cause I love working with Tony. I work with Tony anywhere, anytime. You know, I, the, uh, cauliflower alley club is make is naming their announcer award, the Jim Ross award. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's kind of cool. And, uh, uh, I'm very blessed and very happy. Uh, so I, I get to pick out the first recipient and, uh, I've probably already played my hand, but <clears throat> I'm hoping that scheduling wise that, uh, Tony Schiavone can join us there. And, and be the first recipient of that award. You're getting a little news break here. I haven't talked to Tony. Wow. Uh, uh, but I think that he'll, uh, I think he'll, he would do a great job, uh, you know, quite frankly, and he deserves it 40 yes. years, 40 years in the business and he's still productive and he's still viable. And I just have a great regard and respect and, and fondness. Tony Schiavone. We've been through a lot together and we've never not been friends. We've never not let any of those office politics and God knows there are plenty of them in WCW get in the way of our relationship. So, uh, he's, uh, very much deserving. Hope I get him. I hope I can sell him and convince him to come in for one day, get your award, say a few words. And, uh, uh, I, I, I'm very pleased that that's a great honor. I was just talking to Brian Blair the other day and he's, uh, very excited about this opportunity. So it looks like I'll be in the call at the cauliflower alley club this year. Uh, and, uh, which I'm happy to do and excited. I, you can see so many friends there. It's, it's just a, it's kind of like a, a personal appearance on steroids. It's just, you know, you, it's just hard to beat. It's just really hard to beat. So. But I, I love Tony like a, like a little brother and he's still a hell of an announcer, uh, and does a great job. I'm uh, really, really proud of, you know, I, I didn't like the, 
there was an interlude there where I might, might have been Brooke, uh, might have been the, the baddest bitch on the block idea, but when they made fun of him being a barista, I didn't like that. <clears throat> I didn't like it at all. And, uh, cause I felt like it was degrading to Tony and all Tony was trying to do is make a living. Yeah. That's all simple as that. Same as the rest of us make a living and, uh, him being made fun of to a certain degree of his coffee shop experience, Starbucks experience, whatever it may be, uh, was, uh, was uncomfortable for me. We, uh, we got to talk about the announcement that Meltzer makes in the, uh, observer here. The biggest name to no surprise is Jim Ross, who announced as having signed the most lucrative contract for an announcer in pro wrestling history. And how about that? That's a hell of a thing to be uh, known for and famous for. I mean, it's one thing to call a couple dozen WrestleManias, but to have the most lucrative contract in the history of your profession. How do you beat that in any business? I don't, <clears throat> I don't think you can. Yeah. I was very proud of that, uh, that distinction. And, uh, I don't know, man. I just, it, it just, everything started fitting Conrad. Everything started fitting and pieced together. Everything seemed to fit. It's like those commercials on TV where those guys are doing those block things where you pull this out and hope the stack doesn't fall and all that stuff. Everything seemed to fit really well very tight and very organized. And that's what I, I like that a lot. I liked organization. So it was good. I, I got to ask you about Chris Harrington. Uh, it's written in the observer here. Even Chris Harrington is new to actually working in the business, even though he knows the business end probably as good as just about anyone who never worked in the business end. Uh, we haven't spent a lot of time talking about Chris Harrington. You and I know he's one of the uh, building blocks for AEW. He was a day one guy. He was actually working with Tony Khan well in advance of even the company being named. So behind the scenes, he's been there all along, but he doesn't get discussed a lot uh, in these type forums. What'd you think of Chris Harrington and, and, and his, uh, his role in the company? Very smart guy, Connie, very smart guy, uh, a, a major contributor, uh, from the business side. I've grown to really like Chris. He's a, he's a good guy, smart as hell. And he looks like he's going to be around for the long haul. I'm glad that he is. We should also talk about Keith Mitchell. This is the name that uh, jumped off the page for me. I mean, this guy had done everything from world-class back in the day to WCW and then impact. He's going to be making the leap over as well. What was it like seeing your old pal, Keith Mitchell? It was wonderful. It was heartwarming. You know, Keith's had some health problems here in the last, uh, several months, maybe a little bit longer than that, but, uh, uh, I have great respect for Keith Mitchell. Uh, he got out when he, I think his health started failing him a little bit, uh, which I can all, I can relate to. Uh, but I talked to him, I try to talk to Keith on the phone, uh, on a regular basis. You know, when, when guys get sick, I can tell you this from experience, when you don't hear from anybody, you automatically think, well, they don't care about me. And I may, I wanted to make sure that that's not the way Keith feels about his, my relationship. Uh, we had dozens of lunches in the food court there at the CNN center. And, uh, of course Keith did the TVs and, uh, it was in the truck and just hell of a guy. I love Keith Mitchell with all my heart and soul and I want him to get healthy and happy and, and enjoy his retirement. He, he deserves it. He deserves it, Connie. And he was a great addition to the AEW team from day one. But at some point in time, when you, when you've been in it for so long, uh, you, you come across these intersections that you got to pass through. And I think he just felt like that he had done all he could do. And he had, he had had a successful run with every company that he was with. Uh, he did more of the less toys and, and assets than anybody I've ever worked with in television. Well said, we think the world of Keith Mitchell in these parts, uh, why do you think, um, Keith was so critical to this? I mean, 
I, I just want to put it into context. There's not a lot of guys who've sat in that seat. You know, we know that Kevin Dunn in that era, boy, he would never leave WWE. So where else can you find someone with this sort of skill set? Keith was at the top of a very, very short list at that time. No. Yeah, absolutely. We were lucky to have him because nothing could happen in the truck or at a live show sh- a shoot, a live show that Keith Mitchell had not already experienced on multiple occasions. So, uh, uh, our team at AEW was lucky to have Keith come on board. Uh, I, I, uh, I just, he was invaluable and I just think he got burned out. I know his health was starting to bother him, as I mentioned. So, uh, that's a hell that's the shitty part about getting old, Connie, you know, it's hard, it's hard uh, to overcome mother nature. She wins most mother nature. Doesn't do any jobs. Never has. I ain't going to Meltzer wrote, uh, as far as the announcing team goes, Ross will do the shows and I'm not certain if he'll do the complete shows or just the major matches to get them over a special. Their play by play guys are Alex Marvez and Excalibur. I've known Marvez since he was 16 and he was involved with the observer website before we joined with Brian Alvarez. He was one of the leading NFL reporters in the country. And as of late, has had a pro football show on Sirius XM. He's the former president of the pro football writers of America. And he, like the rest of the guys knows the wrestling business and was actually really uh, perceptive on it. Even as a teenager, did one of the best wrestling newsletters in the country when he was very young. And had done plenty of television and radio for football, but he's never done pro wrestling announcing. Another of Ross's roles will be to mentor both Marvez and Excalibur. And we know that that, that trio didn't last for long, but as I understand it, you guys even actually worked together, perhaps in Atlanta at DDP's place, doing some trial runs on commentary yeah. with the three of you. Talk to me about that. Well, we just didn't know what the, what the formula is going to be, who, who is going to be sitting at the desk. Uh, Alex has a lot of skills and he's a very smart guy. Uh, I enjoy working with him this very day. Alex is the guy that prepares all the, the announcer notes on win loss records, uh, recent histories, things of that nature. So, uh, Alex still provides uh, a great resource for AEW. And uh, I know he's doing, he does interviews and he's good at it. So, uh, I'm, uh, I've always enjoyed working with Alex and he, he's one of those guys that you, you don't think about all the time, but when you do stop and think about it, you realize just how valuable he is. And so, uh, I look for Alex to be a lifer. I look for Alex to be working with Tony and AEW TFN. Till further notice. Let's talk about, you know, the, the growing pains of a startup company. I mean, you're coming from a well-established 50 year business and you help build a lot of the infrastructure there and rebuild it and rebuild it. <laughs> uh, and then you sort of, uh, got out of the race car for a bit, but it was a real 24 seven juggernaut with hundreds of office employees and offices all over the world. And now you're going to an absolute true bootstrapping startup, right? Now, a well-funded startup, but still we've got to build the infrastructure out. Was that fun for you or frustrating for you since you were coming from a place that already had all of that? Uh, a little frustrating at times, but really not that much. Uh, I was, I let the allowed to do my own thing. Basically, uh, you know, I didn't have somebody in my ear telling me what to say every few seconds. Uh, so, and and as far as Alex is concerned, we realized Alex had great value, but it might not be sitting at the desk. And, uh, so that's what, that's what necessitated that change. Uh, so they, you know, everybody likes to be on TV. So Alex uh, still gets to be on television. He still does this and he's very, always well prepared. Uh, so, uh, I'm glad that he's still with us and doing what he does. He does provide a, a, a great service for AEW and I hope he stays there as long as he possibly can because he's a player. No doubt. Let's, uh, let's talk about 
your personal goals? Like, did you have any personal goals coming into AEW? Um, you know, behind the scenes on camera, you know, was this something where you're like, Hey, I, I want this to be the final note of my career. Um, cause you had been sort of out of the WWE spotlight since that, that WrestleMania match with the undertaker, where you called it in the main event. And it felt like you were sort of, uh, on the shelf since, and we know you were really rip and ready to go. Did you just want to have a point to prove or a, a chip on your shoulder or just get us in your mind frame five years ago? Uh, I just wanted to play. I didn't want to be the guy wearing the sun visor on the sideline, carrying around the clipboard. I, I wanted to play and without tooting my own horn too loudly, toot toot. I felt like I could still get the job done. And, uh, luckily for me, Tony Khan felt the same way. What were some of the uh, early challenges of working with a, an absolute startup like this and building out that infrastructure? Well, you gotta, you gotta make sure that you develop some chemistry with your broadcast partners. Yep. And I, I spent lots of time, uh, talking with, uh, Excalibur, especially Alex didn't seem like he was at the desk that long. He, and maybe looking back at it, maybe he was, he wasn't, uh, so, you know, I, I don't have a lot of memories of that, but I knew that Alex was a very, very viable member of the team. And that even though he was not really the best fit at the desk, he was a great fit in other things that he does. So, uh, I'm, a I'm, a, I'm an Alex Marvez fan and, and proud to say that. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, you're not alone in leaving WWE to come over. It turns out Dustin Runnels is going to come over and he's actually going to be at this very first AEW show, double or nothing, May 25th in Las Vegas. And that is reported in the observer just a month out. It's written here. Runnels asked for his notice from WWE on January 19th, and they gave it to him, but he was able to uh, get a 90 day non-compete, which ends on four 19 from the WWE side, Vince McMahon was said to be against it, but Paul Levesque told, talked him into allowing Runnels to leave. The reality is WWE hadn't done anything with him in years and he's 50 and coming off double knee surgery. It's hard to figure the decisions on who they let go. Since with Runnels, it was a lock. If he was let out of his contract, he was coming here. And his contract was expiring fa fairly soon, but WWE could have frozen it and continued for another eight months because he had time off during these recent surgeries. Ah, oh, damn it. And Jr. has lost his internet. We're live pal. This is the dangers of, uh, doing it live to tape, but Jim Ross has lost his internet in Jacksonville, Florida, but he is still safe and sound. That is until one of those walk-ons comes over because I know for a fact that Jr. has got a pocket full of blue chew and you need to as well. If you haven't already checked out blue chew, what are you waiting for, man? This is uh, a unique online service that delivers you the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis and Levitra, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost, take them anytime day or night. So you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. And I'm telling you. This really works. Think of it as like a hot tag for your wiener. It's PEDs for your, your ball meat. I'm such a big believer in this product because and I've actually got friend of mine, friends of mine who've been subscribed for this or prescribed for this. And now they do have a subscription and they tell me that it's like their superpower. You know, if they, if, if things have been in a, and we all have this, you're not on the same page with your partner. You know, we're not arguing, we're not fighting, but it just feels like we're not in sync. This helps reset that. This is the control alt delete for your love life, for the intimacy in your relationship. I really do mean that. So I want you to go right now to sign up at bluetooth.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part is it's all done online. So that means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Bluetooth tablets are made in the USA. They're prepared and shipped directly to your door, all in a discreet package. And Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. So discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. 
and we've got a special deal for our listeners. You can try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code JR at checkout. Just pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com. The promo code is JR and you receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring today's podcast. And we also appreciate all the support that we've received on our YouTube channel. I want to remind you that uh, it's totally free to subscribe. It's grillingjr.com. I want you to go and not only hit the subscribe button, but turn on the notifications bell. JR and I are going to start doing some live episodes here on YouTube. We might do some pay-per-view preview shows or some pay-per-view post wrap-up shows or have some special guests or watch some old tape back. Just respond to some breaking news. But grillingjr.com is going to be your home for all things Jim Ross. And speaking of Jim Ross, did you know that you can pre-order his book? You don't have to pre-order anymore. It's out. It's finally out. And it's available now at jrbook50.com. That's jrbook50.com. I've had a chance to see the book. I absolutely love it. We, we were just told before we clicked uh, record today that JR has spent the last two weeks really reading his book. So the audio book is on the way because he just wrapped it up yesterday. But the book now is available at all bookstores online, Amazon, your Kindle. It's called business is about to pick up. This is the third book that JR's put out with Paul O'Brien. If you've never seen any of his books before, I think the one he put out right before the pandemic might actually be my favorite book about wrestling of all time. But this is a much different format. It's 50 calls to celebrate 50 years in professional wrestling. So some of the more iconic moments in your wrestling fandom, they're laid out here with the backstory and the details. And I thought they've done a fabulous job. It's a real page turner, but it's easy to consume. You could, uh, well, let's just say it like Jr. says it. It's easy to read on the can. JRbook50.com is where you can hook it up. And of course, you know, it costs nothing to look over at jrsbbq.com. They've got something for everybody, whether you're looking for the all-purpose seasoning, whether you're looking for the main event mustard, the Chipotle ketchup, two types of barbecue sauce. I like the original rather than the hot. And I, I've tried to talk JR into this before and talk some sense into him. He's losing money and, and he's giving stuff away below cost, certainly below value. I'm talking about autograph figures and autograph trading cards. The trading card community has really boomed over the last several years. And JR still signing his old cards and sending them out. And you send that in and get graded. It's going to pay for you a whole bunch of free sauce. I mean, that's really the, the, the strategy to me go right now. As long as he'll let you do it. I can't believe he's doing it. It's a little silly to me. JR's BBQ.com. And order an autograph trading card. You send it off and get it rated and slabbed. It's an investment. It's worth more money instantly. And now that you found that newfound value, take your ass back to jrsbbq.com and buy some, some sauce. One to display next to the card on a shelf and one to give to mama and say, hey, let's make some ribs this weekend. And season those ribs with the all-purpose seasoning. They're great on eggs. They're great on popcorn. I am a big believer in JR's products. It's not just a gimmick. It's really, really good. Check it out for yourself. Find out for yourself at jrsbbq.com. And I can't tell you how excited JR is to be out making appearances again. You heard it at the top of the show. Go out of your way to go see JR in Hartville, Ohio. It's happening next weekend, May 18th. And this is his first time doing something like this in a while. We need to show up and show out for JR. Let's let JR know how much we care about him. My man's had it rough, you know, between falling earlier this year, all the cancer issues with the leg, losing Jan a few years ago, he fell, he hurt himself and he's been put through the ringer and he's putting himself back out there again. Cause that's what he does. We ought to, if we really love Jr. the way we say we do show up and support his ass on May 18th in prime time, Hartville, Ohio, primetime 12.com. It's May 18th, Hartville, Ohio, May 18th primetime12.com. Listen, folks, this wasn't the plan. We, uh, we probably had another 15, 20 minutes of conversation. I'm sure we'll get them sooner rather than later, but Hey man, his internet's down. Uh, kind of, you don't want to hear from me. Do you really? 
Well, I'll tell you somebody you might want to hear from, and that's our pal, the Blue Meanie. We're actually debuting a brand new series called Mornings with Meanie. We don't talk about a lot of current stuff here on the program, but at adfreeshows.com, starting this and now every Saturday morning, the Blue Meanie is a friend of ours. So he's going to break down all the latest news and happenings in the world of WWE, AEW, TNA, and more. And uh, it's going to be happening with a live studio audience. Hey, Blue Meanie here, and I am very excited to announce that I will be doing ad-free shows each and every Saturday morning for a brand new series called Mornings with Meanie. I'll be recapping the week of professional wrestling in a live interactive format. All ad-free show members are invited to join as part of the live studio audience as we discuss all the latest happenings in WWE, AEW, and much, much more. So join me this Saturday exclusively over at adfreeshows.com. Man, when I was a kid, Saturday mornings were all about cartoons and then professional wrestling. And uh, who better than our favorite cartoon character himself, Mr. Blue Meany, to uh, talk to us about all the current news and stories happening in wrestling. And we're going to be doing it live. So if you got questions and you want opinions from the Blue Meany, Come join us and hang out each and every Saturday morning at adfreeshows.com. That's where you'll get all these shows early and ad free. You can even be a part of our live studio audience while we were working with uh, JR's internet today. We had a chance to uh, chat up with Phil and Alex and Lindsay and Coach Keith and uh, Eric Green and Coach Rosie and Bobby was here and Denovius Mack and so many more. We appreciate you and Alex Wheaton and everybody showing up and hanging out. And, uh, we would love to see you join our big community as well. That's really what we're trying to do with adfreeshows.com. I mean, I don't think without adfreeshows.com, I don't know that Eric Bischoff would have been at Lindsay's wedding. How about that? What a crazy story that was. If you missed it, Eric told the story on this past Monday's 83 weeks. I encourage you to check that out and check out all the crazy bonus content. That's at adfreeshows.com, including every Starcast panel we've ever done and so much more. It's uh, only nine bucks a month to get all these shows early and ad free and all the bonus content starts at just $29 and you don't just get this month's bonus content, but you get all the previous bonus content and who could, how can you beat all the interactive stuff? Uh, we are just, uh, several weeks away now from top guy weekend, which is going to be in Chicago. And then before you know it, we're going to be doing top guy rumble. It's a lot of fun. I hope you'll take a look at adfreeshows.com and I hope you'll be back to hang out with JR and myself here next week. We're going to be coming each and every week right here at grillingjr.com. One last time, if you haven't already, go hit the subscribe button, turn in the notifications bell on, and we'll see you guys sooner rather than later right here on Grilling JR with the voice of wrestling, Mr. Jim Ross. Double J, Jeff Jarrett here with a few of my pals to tell you about the total non-stop savings happening over at SaveWithConrad.com. Jason Eblin, and I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Just looking to find a way to eliminate some debt and been listening to the podcast for years and always heard the advertisements and thought I'd give it a shot and best decision I, I made in a, in a long time. <laughs> Worked with Larry and Francis and Amber. It's been nothing but pleasant experience. I've been listening to the podcast for years and at that time never needed it but this past year just with things that's happened in life and debt piling up this is a great opportunity to to see what you all have to offer and like i said it, it's been great able to breathe again <laughs> to be able to save that much and be able to eliminate debt and be able to enjoy life and not have that that worry so i cannot thank you all enough my name is Jason Eblin, and I save $1,500 a month to save with Conrad. In my world, it doesn't get any better than five stars. Find out how much money Conrad and his team can save you by strutting over to SaveWithConrad.com. So right now, strut on over to SaveWithConrad.com. NMLS number 32416, Equal Housing Lender, SaveWithConrad.com.